So I read in the comments today that, uh, and I don't know if this person was pulling my leg or, or not, but he was like, the DigiDesign 888 interface was such an incredible audio interface. And I, when that thing came out, uh, you kind of have to remember, and I don't know if it's it's been a while, when you bought a Pro Tools system back then, you bought the card, the interface, and the software. is all bundled together. It's not like it is today that you could buy the software separately and pick out your audio interface. So you had to use the DigiDesign interface that they, they gave you. And the 888, uh, it's, it was eight inputs, eight outputs, uh, analog and uh, AES EBU. So it was a, a versatile, had a lot of uh, uh, connections to it. But it, it sounded uh, very thin and very harsh. And when I would take out Pro Tools to do demos and people would compare it to their tape machines, it was like, yeah, it's great that you can sync up to tape and you can take all the stuff off. But once you put it back, it doesn't sound the same. It's it's not right. So you, you didn't have the option to buy other interfaces. So when uh, Apogee came out with their AD8000 uh, audio interface, it, it was a big deal. Because what they did is they reverse engineered their audio interface to work with the Pro Tools card. And their converter sounded fantastic. Um, but DigiDesign did not give them the blessing to do this. So there was no support from them. I mean, at, at one point there was a little bit of support, but they decided not to not to endorse any third-party uh, audio interfaces. I mean, one is a business decision. The other is if you start doing that, then you have to uh, verify if they work and you're kind of doing their tech support. So it's easier for them to just say it's we're not supporting it. But once that interface came out, I took that 88,000 studios and we would record through an 888 and then record through an 88,000. And it was day and night difference. I mean, not subtle, big, big difference. The Like I said, the 888, very thin, very harsh. And then you would listen to the 88,000 and it was big and fat and round and it, very pleasant to listen to. But... The 88,000 was not a cheap interface. I think it was around $6,000 for uh, the, the interface. And, uh, but when I did a demo and people, even people that didn't have the budget, they would find the money because that interface sounded that good. And I was selling gobs of them. I mean, 10, 20 at a time, you know, cause uh, studios would buy the 88,000, not just for Pro Tools. Put them in front of a uh, DA88, a Tascam machine, or put it in front of an ADAT machine. Uh, so we there were plenty of them, and and the metering on them was really fantastic. They were really uh, nice place, nice devices. But the the one thing that that I wanted to talk about that 888. But the other thing I, I wanted to say is there's a lot of times when you'll demo a piece of product that's maybe out of the person's price range, but as soon as they hear how good it sounds, uh, uh, they find the money. Uh, I remember when the KRK 703s came out, they were small speakers, they had that yellow cone and they had that uh, inverted tweeter. And uh, when you heard them, they sounded fantastic. Uh, you know, they were a passive speaker. They got it, uh, I think it was a seven inch or a six inch woofer. But I would, uh, they, they were $900 for a pair. And people were still, you know, buying NS10s back then. And I had them set up in the showroom that I'd have a pair of KRK 703s and the NS10s. And I would play through one speaker, then switch over to the other one. And big, big difference. And people were, they they came in to buy, uh, uh, what do you call, NS10s, the Yamahas. And they were about, I think, like $400 a pair or so. And, you know, the KRKs at $900, big difference. But they found the money. So I guess the moral to this uh, this clip here is if you show people the right gear and how it can sound better uh, and they find value in that, they'll find the money to, to buy it. But this all started off with somebody saying how fantastic the 888 is. And uh, no, it wasn't. I'm sorry. <laughs>